We're noticing, especially with some of the uncertainty that we have in this industry and, you know, as consumers, because we're also consumers as well. So we enjoy dining out is it becomes very expensive where you start wanting to go to a place just when it's a holiday or an anniversary or birthday. And so I've really been pushing this over the last several years with everybody that we've worked with. Let's find a way to be responsible and let's lower our prices. Let's lower our costs. We can keep our profit margin where it is because again, this is a business. We are business owners. And so I have from insurance to workers comp to the payroll. Yes. Payroll say. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but between rent and rents are, are escalating. Yeah. So we have all of these things that we have to worry about, but we also have our staff to worry about as well. And they have to earn their wages and we care about where they're at. Why can't we lower our costs and lower our prices and instead of somebody coming once a month or every other month, why can't they come twice a week? And so when we decided to you know, put our heels in on our relationship and make it a little bit deeper, that was one of the challenges that I think we both came up with, which was let's find a way to lower our, our prices and still make the same amount of money, still make the same profit margin. But can we actually move forward and lower our prices? And it has been game busters. Since Mark has taken over the chefing at Wobbly Olive, we have doubled, if not two and a half times, our food sales. And we've been able to lower prices. Welcome to Tap and Table. I'm Matthew Schnipper. My co-host is Ryan Hannigan. We are here today with Sean and Inez Fitzgerald and Mark Henry. Uh, they are partners in Wobbly Olive and Illusion Speakeasy. There are two locations, one downtown, one out on Powers at the First and Main. We're going to talk about all that, the history of both, and we're going to get into some really fun stories about this rotating pop-up thematic bar that changes quarterly, as well as this American Cocktail Bistro. All that after the break. Downtown Colorado Springs, home of the largest concentration of independent restaurants in Southern Colorado, is proud to sponsor Tap and Table and support the passionate individuals who make the food and beverage industry a cultural highlight in our lives. With more than 140 restaurants, cafes, bars, breweries, and coffee shops within its boundaries, Downtown Colorado Springs has the perfect something to satisfy any craving. Find a complete list of where to dine and drink at downtowncs.com. I'm personally thrilled to have the Ute Restaurant sponsor this episode of Tap and Table. Why? Because I'm a member at City Rock Climbing Gym, where the Ute is located. I love that the Ute has healthy house-made items like salads, wraps, and two of my personal favorites, the Thai peanut Buddha bowl and a turmeric quinoa black bean bowl. There's also hearty pastas, flatbread pizzas, Cuban sliders, and even a great customizable ramen bowl. The Ute also hosts over 50 of the finest craft beers on a constantly rotating menu. Me. I'm always working my way through the IPAs from brands like Cerebral and Outer Range. I dig that I can show up at the bar with climbing chalk still on my clothes because of the casual atmosphere. It's a comfortable space, rich with character, even kid-friendly, and you don't have to climb to enjoy the eatery. Check out the Ute restaurant inside City Rock at 21 North Nevada Avenue next time you're downtown. They're open from 4 to 10 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Plus, you just might see me there. And we're back. And we're recording. Is that how that's done? That's exactly how that's done. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, I was going to say something, too. I'm glad you I, asked. I was very thrown off by that. I was like, well, he wait, at, are we he taking did, a he break? He looked at Ryan like he was supposed to do something. <laughs> you guys wait for him to start clapping again. <laughs> You're aware of post-production and editing where we just... No. I just don't... Not at all. I've yeah. never... I don't do camera stuff. I thought there stuff. was actually going to be some sound or something that was going on. No, we're, we're, in, we're in a really weird location today. Uh, every episode, weird. as our listeners it's know... It's weird. It's cool. It's great. It's cool. I mean, it's different. Like, everywhere we go, we film in a new location... There's nothing here that would tell you exactly where we are other mm. than we're in Monica's Monica. kitchen. Monica's apartment. apartment. Monica's apartment from the show Friends that ran in like the mid-90s, late-90s. Uh, and that's Ots. the current theme, aughts. The aughts. Ots. <laughs> Sean just learned the word aughts, by the way, from my notes. So he was like, what's, what's aught? Uh, it ran from 94 to 2004, according to my research this morning. 
I remember this because I went, uh, my uh, Courtney Cox went to my high school. So like friends was a big oh, deal back really? home. Yeah. So when I, at my first restaurant job when I was 15 and 16, <clears> I got to, well, we waited on them. They, they came in as a group, the, the whole show cast or whatever. So it's a big deal, but I didn't, cool I didn't watch the show. I didn't care. Um, oh, I so <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning this I'm a scene is we're in, you guys build these elaborate sets for these quarterly things. So I want to start with illusion. We'll get back to wobbly. We'll get back to your partnership in the history, but let's start right in the seat of where we are today this friends theme what's going on here what what are we where are we why are we here <sighs> existentially why we're here. so where where illusion started was when when chef wanted to open rooster's house of ramen there was a small little storage closet in the back and he just had no idea he was like i could be dry storage and i had this idea this inspiration I was like i want to do a bar back there he's like you can see like 12 people i was like yeah let me do that and so we opened Sakura with Dylan um, and had such a fun time during that. When Dylan decided to open the archives, we, he had really built this place up to something that was so much fun. Just Sakura with 12 seats that we could only see 12 people. And um, there was another bartender in town that wanted to just rent the space for one weekend. And he wanted to do a pirate themed pop up bar. At the same time, we had tickets to go to the Lego bar. Mm-hmm. Brick bar. The, the brick bar in Denver. And that ended up getting canceled. And it was like, wow, well, pop-up bars could be a lot of fun, but that's a lot of work for one weekend. Why don't we do this for a few months? And the very first one we did was Game of Thrones. And so we had this, this whole <laughs> idea, and it was, a, it was just a proof of concept. That's all we want to do was just let's – we're just going to do one. And I remember the very first night, we you know put – Quite a bit of money into it just try to get through that one theme game of thrones it was season eight it was the final it was the finale of this entire big big production and i still remember the first night that there was you know nudity on a tv and then there was the war music happening in the background and people were having so much fun to the point where we had to kick people out with six foot broadswords that were coming in. Yeah. yeah and you told me there was a, someone actually got hurt on your staff. Is that right? People were very aggressive. They yeah. really oh, wanted, yeah. I got hurt. You got hurt. Yeah. Your uh, uh, yeah, nose, got nose hairs got singed. <laughs> a lady <laughs> pulled out a wand, a stick lighter and she lit my nose on fire. Yeah. The general manager for roosters was working the front door and got kicked and broke her foot. I told somebody it was going to be a 45-minute wait. They decided to uh, pull a sword on me. <laughs> so after all that, you're like, this is working great. Let's keep doing this. Yeah, we're it idiots. Was fun. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a blast, it was entertaining. actually. Um, it, was, it was such a blast. And it was that, that moment when I'm bartending with Jonathan Isaac. And we're bartending. I'm like, this is going to work. We only have 12 seats. And so from that, we just kept growing. So now the pressure was, what's the next one? Now, how are we going to do the next one? Do we have enough money to afford the next one? And so, because we were completely caught off guard on how it took off. You mean it's financial? Like the, financially, they, 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 they take a lot to stage. Oh my god! Because you buy, yes. you buy everything. You you build sets. You build like yes. basically. We yeah. have to pay a construction crew and like it's expensive. And new glassware every time. We're and new glassware every time. And the mental energy behind coming up with you know forty new recipes every single ninety days. Yeah. Would you, so, would you even share like a ballpark for like what does it cost to do these like low and high end of like to, to do 20, a show? 20000 to 80000 Holy shit. 80000 yeah. would be. When we were only 12 seats, yeah. we was on the 20000 Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but, from, but from, from the success, and it really came down to, I mean, I love to pat ourselves on the back and say we're just amazing. But the other side behind that, though, is we, we've hired so well people that are really into these things that they – even when we're shut down, they come and they're doing more than we are helping decorate with ideas, with cocktail ideas. So we've really created a culture, I guess, of nerd farts. I think. I mean, everybody's a nerd that works for us. We're all nerds. And so it's great. And they're just they get so passionate, even if they're not into whatever that theme is. Everybody dives in and they they learn so much about it. And so then they come back with ideas that we never even thought of. So it's really the team at this point right now that's just really pushing us forward. We have the idea for the next theme and what we see in our mind's eye, but they come up with stuff we've never thought of. Okay. How's the, how's the, uh, the community's uh, reception been to it? Is that also a driver too? Because I, I feel like I see a lot more people that are 
clamoring over the next thing that's coming out or like when you do a little reveal I think mm-hmm. you did something about the, the one that's coming out after this and people just went gangbusters about it yeah. we're, bu- we're booked for yeah. the first month like yeah. people, which is incredible and so I think it's you know I think especially when we're looking at you know it's not about getting drunk this never has been about getting drunk it's about having some escapism he and says so, that while Inez is drinking from a turkey glass <laughs> and I'm drinking from a nipple glass. yeah how does this work again <laughs> Show so it's just from the top it's the nubbin from friends <laughs> okay. it's the third nipple <laughs> okay and then the flow is fantastic. The flow is good. The flow is good. You don't have to suck. It just goes. Well, see, it's got, it's got a big hole. Yeah, you don't have to suck it. Okay. Yeah. Gravity yeah. does the work. It's great. But I find myself naturally sucking. <laughs> it's like one of those glug jars that are really famous on or popular on TikTok right now. Is those, yeah. those fish glug jars. Have you seen those? What? Uh, no. Yes. no. You got to look it up. Okay. 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 There. So give us a quick rundown, like <laughs> to date, what themes have been done? Can you, can you do this? Oh. Off so we here? just said, so this is our 20th theme. So Shit. the next ones are 21st. Yeah, so from we Harry did, Potter. We've done Harry Potter three times. Princesses and Villains. Star Wars. Uh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Game of Thrones. Lord of the Rings. Game of Thrones, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. We did Archer. Lord of the Rings twice. Did Archer? We yeah, did we Archer did Archer fine. briefly. And um, we did Star Wars the first time, but then COVID shut us down, so we didn't. Yeah. We brought it back. You for did a second Barbie. Time. We did Barbie. Yes, yeah. we just finished We did Barbie. Nightmare Before Christmas. That's yep. my favorite. Oh, and then there was a Stranger Things. Stranger Stranger Things Things. actually was my favorite. So Stranger Things was funny. So we, when we approached, when we approached the second location and where the second location came from was after COVID, we were able to open back up. The Wobby Olive was going to die. Prices were too expensive. We we couldn't, uh, labor was too expensive. Food was so expensive, but on the alcohol, we had a, a higher profit margin. So we were able to keep everybody employed and so we had this big dining room on the east side of town at the Wobbly Olive, and we couldn't sustain it. And it was we were going to be, a, I guess, close a, a statistic. Yeah, a statistic. Mm-hmm. Of we were we were just going to be like everybody else. We just mm-hmm. couldn't we couldn't afford to do it. Big. So we really had to sit down and make that hard decision. Okay, we're going to do a second illusion. And so when we did that, the first thing that we did was Marvel or su- superheroes and villains. Mm-hmm. So it was Marvel, DC, and it fell and it bombed. I think it was such a broad subject. Too big of a too big of a thing. We, we had we had a shot called the Tick from the nineties. <laughs> oh, this was, was hilarious. Amazing. This was funny. That it was, was a, it was a thimble. It, it was, was a, a blue thimble of with overproof, overproof <laughs> on, on a whole serving tray, just one tiny little thimble. Uh-huh. Great. Yeah. So it was so somebody like a bucket. For the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we had the Hulk smash hands. That was fun. Yeah, that was a lot. We had so much fun with it, but it fell flat because <clears> I think it was too broad. And so we've learned a lot from things that work. We did um, a haunted house, fell flat. Mm-hmm. It was there was just yeah. it was too broad at that point. So the reason we did Stranger Things was halfway through, uh, we started seeing that our, that our our bartenders and servers their tips were cut in half after a month. And so when they're normally used to making X, now they're making Y, and so they're panicking. So we had we were forced responsibly to make make that call, and we did it in four days. And so we closed it down, mm-hmm. did Stranger Things in four days. It was a hell of a pivot. It, oh, here's, here's, <laughs> well, yeah. but it was worth it. Yeah. Well, it, yes. so it brought it all back up. Yes. And because as, as business owners, it's our responsibility more, in, in my opinion, to make sure that we're taking care of our staff first. Our staff will take care of our guests and customers. We have to, to focus on what they're earning. And if we focus on that, everything else falls into place. They will do an incredible job. So this is a quick hit question for each of you, and it's quick. Uh, you tell me your favorite theme and why. Start okay. here. My favorite one to date has been Stranger Things. <clears throat> I, I really loved <clears throat> how quickly it came together, but also it looked just like the set from the show. We had a couch right here on this wall with the wallpaper and the Christmas lights. Nice. It and it, it went off with the, you know, it was on timers. So the different lights would pop up and do different things. And it was just, it was super fun. It was, I think that was actually kind of a turning point for illusion where the actual themes really started to become, you know, very photorealistic to what we were going after and just everything has improved from there. But that one was just like a shot in the dark overnight and just crushed it. Inez? I have to agree. I mean, stranger things. (laughs) I can't believe we did it in four days at two locations and we planned it within seven days 
So, I mean, normally it takes us months to do these things, but we went uh, to the official Netflix set after we did Stranger Things. And I took a video of it because I couldn't it. believe yeah. how I mean, you you exact <laughs> the set was to what we did here. It was actually incredible. And I think I did a, I did, I posted a comparison on our uh, stories, Instagram stories of their set and our set. And I call it a set because I feel like that's kind of what it is at this point. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I'm an 80s kid, too. Like, mm. the music, the vibe, like, the whole thing for me is... Shout I mean, out I to love Goodwill and Salvation Army. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, somebody did give us a bad review because we left a couple of the Goodwill stickers on some of the furniture. But it's like, come on. We had four days to plan this. What, what do you expect from us? We're going to find 80s furniture. <laughs> All right, Sean, your turn. But do not say Stranger Things. You I'm, have I wasn't to going to because I'm not a follower and a loser. Um, yeah. I'm going to say... <laughs> I would say, actually, Star Wars. The... the mm. I wanted to do Star Wars, and when we were shut down for that, it also gave us an opportunity. Stranger Things did teach us if we put a little bit more, because we used to just put posters and you know auto film wraps on panels, and and it was fun, and the glass door was cool. But until we did Stranger Things, we really never went balls out, and it gave me the confidence to just let it swing. And so for Star Wars, we actually the two different locations kind of not not compete against each other, but. They're we opposing. They're opposing. Duality, yes, exactly. I guess. And so down here, we did Rebels. Out east, we did The Empire. And that was the first time that I felt confident to really do full construction. So we built the entire Death Star. And, and it, took, it took a long time. I mean, months in advance. But we built the entire Death Star. And we built, you know, three different, all three of the first original movies, the best ones, um, for <laughs> Star Wars. But... It was very fun because then we started realizing we have to shoot for the stars every single time. And so we try to get better every single theme. Like I've seen you hire like professional makeup and design artists in Denver for like Lord of the Rings. But uh -huh. you're saying you built that though or you hired so, for that? No, we built no, that. You built that. We built we that. Like paper mache and just shit in your garage or what? But like, the statues no. he builds. Or, uh, yeah. Kevin. And we, we hadn't even met him at that point. And so artist, yeah. we realized that something that was going to take me, you know, 60 hours to build, he can build in 20 and for a very reasonable cost too. So at that point, we are we're already almost done with the next theme on construction. We're trying to be that ahead, and it's mm. a lot of work. So like when we start coming into friends and having our drinks, you're already on to the next one in your head, moving yes. and oh, starting I built, the shop I, and all we that. We built this entire kitchen in January, before two months before we even opened. Hmm. So what what happens with all the stuff after you're done? Warehouse. Fuck. Uh, do you have do you have just shipping containers and, and we have storage? A storage uh, you we, we have a warehouse that's. Has so if you need to bring it back, you can. Yeah. yeah. Well, we used to not have a warehouse, and so we would <coughs> just sell everything to everybody. And it's kind of funny because we still get plenty of people that are like, "Okay, when can I start buying stuff?" It's like, "Okay, well, we're really not selling things anymore because now we have storage solutions, and it it just makes sense for us to keep these things. So if we need to repurpose them for any reason, we can do so." But people but, but really want to buy. Just things. between us, how much for the nipple glass? Like. <laughs> Actually, I have. I bought an influx of those from you a can wholesaler. Find those on Etsy. So <laughs> no. Actually, these are really hard to find. Oh, I bet. I I search the internet high and low for nipple glasses. You can find like vintage ones and stuff. When that kind of goes into you know some of the challenges that we have is you know Inez has really taken on that role of being able to source a lot of you know a lot of these things. And so we have ideas and we'll just start whiteboarding things. And it's like, okay, go find this stuff. Yeah. That's a, I was going to ask that question later. Let's just do it while we're here now. I'm drinking out of a porcelain couch. You're drinking out of a giant turkey thing. You're drinking out of a nipple. You have a... You're welcome. What is this? A dinosaur. A dinosaur. A dinosaur. Yeah, I'm drinking out of an egg. Mark's got a glass that says I got boned at the Museum of Natural History. I don't know what that means, but I think it's a nice mug. Um, it's a mug that Ross <laughs> <laughs> gives uh, Rachel, I think, as a gift. Okay. Well, um, and so that that's where Friends was such a challenge, Ashley, is that there's less to pull from. And it was a sitcom and it, uh, about people, see, not about monsters and right. And they tried to make it look very real life, it natural. Was, yeah, yeah, it was very yeah. natural. So you have so, to count on like people to get these references to single episode little one off yes. jokes, right? Yeah. Like the true fans. So that's a succulent planter 
And so <laughs> it, that's what it is. It, yeah, it had holes in the legs. And so we, we had, had to we had to make sure that we did everything as far as food safe as possible. But it was a, it's a planter box. Okay. Right. So I know this is your role usually. You are <laughs> are you queen of shopping for glassware for everything? Yes. She's queen of shopping. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just shopping. Just, stop in shopping. Just, just there. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that. Where, what length do you go to? Where do you go? Where do you find it? How much do you pay? Like. How does this work? How do you stock stock this? Okay, so I've gone as far as like I've sourced glassware from a lady in Great Britain who made me teacup martini glasses special. And she made me like 20 of them. Um, But then I've also, Amazon's great, a great resource. Um, Google image reverse search. So like there's some things that are, you know, on this set here that like, I was able to find through that, so it's been a godsend. I will search the internet high and low for the most random glassware. I'll use vases. I've used shoes. I've, I've you name it. I've used it as glassware, probably. All right. If it has a hole in it. Do you have, a, do you have any like favorite favorite like the weirdest like in the shoe or something? Was it just like um, that oh, was geez. badass? We pulled that off. People drank out of that for three months. You know, damn. I, pro- I really like the nipple. <laughs> really so like does nipple. everybody else. <laughs> right. I like the Sauron's hand at the Lord of the Rings. It was that just was cool. cool. It was just yeah. a cool glass. That was a fun one, too. Yeah. I love that glass. Mm-hmm. What did you drink out of for Star Wars? Like, uh, Oh, we had a bunch of uh, Star Wars tiki glassware. There's this cool company called Geeky Tiki's. Shout out. I don't know if they'll ever see it, but. They, they have job. wonderful glassware. It's like licensed, but it's really expensive. And like, I love to source my tiki glassware from them specifically if I can. So I think my favorite thing for Star Wars was there was a, we went to Galaxy's Quest at Disneyland and they had, it looked like an aquarium that had tubes that came down and it was their tap system into a drink. And so our mm-hmm. goal was to kind of simulate that and we did it. And so... Trace Agave's, um, or Trace Jen actually was the one that gave us the the countertop tap system, but then we put a, a aquarium around it, so it looked like it was coming from a, whatever that monster was into mm-hmm. a drink. Cool. Like his, yeah, it looked it was, very like Ghostbuster. Right. Yeah, it was really cool <laughs> to just coming up with those ideas to give you know our guests fun. Have you done a Ghostbusters theme yet? We've talked about it. Okay. Just, I just put it out there. And Ninja Turtles is popped up yeah a lot we like to do polls i think it's funny people are like you should do <coughs> polls, sure polls to no yeah like user polls to yeah. decide which themes and it's like we do we when, post when them is all the the, time. Uh, <laughs> the ken burns civil war 10 part documentary series coming up as a theme i think what i think it's gonna be fantastic yeah, um, it's gonna be great. Yeah. yeah very yeah. period esque yeah. yeah all the drinks are gonna have uh Keynotes to scurvy. Right. <laughs> just, it's Everything's all, it's just going to have a line in it. <laughs> Citrus. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Canned soda we, bread. We did favorites. Could we do a quick round of quick hits on your, your least favorite th- theme and why? Mm. You're first this time. Let's so I order. think uh, we learned a lot because right after. So, yeah, we so we started with Game of Thrones. Then we went to Harry Potter. It was the first time we did Harry Potter with 12 seats. And then the next one we thought was September, October of 2017, 18, we could do the haunted house. And we put so, that was the most expensive one that we'd done. I don't even remember this one. Um, so we, we, we made that, we made the curtains, we like the, like the walk-in curtains that you would go through. And, yeah, like, and it and looked like there was a silhouette and there was and blood and, all over it. Yeah. We had the switchback little hallway that was... And you were there and you were there. <laughs> it was right next to your office before we, yeah. we had expanded. It was right next to the... Yeah, uh, I don't remember that one at all. Because we did $9,000 the whole theme. <laughs> now, is this a, 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 a just Haunted House theme at large? Or there's a, there's one movie called Haunted House? No, no, we did Haunted House. No, it was just Haunted House. House. Yeah, we, I think we called theme. it yeah. just I wanted to say something like that. horror movies, remember. but okay. when I say horror, it, it, it comes horror out like horror. Right. Like, like hooker movies. Right, right, right. So, right. that being said, so... <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite genre movie. So Sean's least favorite is Haunted House at large. Uh, haunted House at large. What's yours, Blaine's? Mm. Actually, the true first one we did at A2 was the... Fantastic the prequel, Beast. Fantastic Beast. That one was probably my least favorite one, just because I like the Fantastic Beast movies, but at the time we didn't really know how to create duality with Harry Potter and, you know, doing two locations. We have it figured out now, but 
then we were like, let's do Fantastic Beasts. And then we realized that it's just, it's not that great of a movie compared to Harry Potter. So, it's not that it's not that great of a just movie. Just my opinion. It's <laughs> like, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. no, so Harry Potter's so nostalgic. Mm-hmm. And so well, it's multifaceted. It right. is, it is. And so there was that nostalgia behind Fantastic Beasts because mm-hmm. they're already, they're adults at that point. So yeah. I agree with that too. So, so Mark, what's your least favorite? So why? it was, I think it was shortly after we opened A2, we did uh, like superheroes and villains, mm. like almost Marvel versus DC. And yeah. that one just, I don't know. We didn't run that one for long. We, we killed it early. We but did a shitty job with that. It felt like that one just went on forever. And, and it was shortly after <laughs> um, like all the shutdowns and everything had, had kind of come to an end too. So we were kind of rebuilding staff and we, mm-hmm. we just had some holes in the staff and things weren't jiving and the, the theme didn't feel right. And it just was fucking miserable. Everything was like made with like felt and scissors, and it was just we did a yeah. shitty job <laughs> designing it too. So the takeaway I thought, I thought is it was okay. Nope, it it could have been better. I I think if we if I think if we attempted it now, it much would better. be much much yeah. better. Yeah. However, as long as we did plaster the wall and you know felt wows resources and weren't as <laughs> that, that, that killed me. Big as they are now, and that's also part of the how far we can go with the theme. Depends on how busy the previous theme is. If if the previous theme sucks, then we're kind of like you know limited on what financially. We can purchase. It's harder to and transition. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Because so. the first forty five days, it's just recouping what we put in, and then there's a small amount of okay, we have some profit. Let's refill the coffers, and now it's like save for the next one. Mm-hmm. So if, if that theme dies pretty quickly now it's because it's more challenging to go to the next one let me throw it up out there real quick if you get desperate and funds are low and you need to reboot stranger things just glue everything to the ceiling and call it the upside down world you don't have to spin anything it's upside down you know expensive glue is right <laughs> and then just <laughs> use some screws man some staples <laughs> anyway that's a free expensive. idea go yeah, for it right. <laughs> we so, will we will give you a, a shout out if we end oh. up using that idea you Perfect. will get credit. If anything falls, it's not my problem. I'm signing, oh, you will get credit. Well. <laughs> no, we really do. <laughs> what are we going to ask? I I, you no, I was, you're good. I, I, I know that as you talked about the, the tiki thing, how often is tiki uh, like drinks and, and that part included in the theme? I know I've, I saw it at Barbie. Mm-hmm. I think it's been in a couple of the themes that I've been to. Uh, is it always a component? No, not always. I, I love the glassware. I mean... Does it, is Tiki it, cocktails aren't necessarily the best cocktails, so we try to recreate maybe better versions of classics. Or you know, there's there's a few cl- there's a few tiki's out there that are really good, like the painkiller. It's a crowd pleaser, you know. The, did did the, a rep the, just push the, like the a, a couple cases of blue curacao on you, and then you're like, all right, we got to. Tiki. But no, it's, well, it's, it's actually not even no. that. It's, it's, so from a bartender perspective, you know, a mai tai is actually an incredible cocktail. Mm-hmm. But it also knocks you in the ass too, right? Yes. And so that four alcohols, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And is. so that They're being strong. said, I think that there's a misconception. You think tiki, you're thinking, you know, something that's overly sweet, something that's really fun and bright and vibrant. It should be fun, bright and vibrant, but it will also fuck you up. And so, from that perspective, when we actually have done very traditional tiki drinks, they get returned constantly, yeah, because. People are expecting the sweet, yeah, right? So yeah. I, I think you're thinking vacation, the blue yeah, wine, exactly. or something, but that's not a tiki. I cocktail. think tiki style of cocktail is actually almost like um, so over the it, garnish. It's almost like the, one of the mother sauces in, in food. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, tiki is a style, is something to draw inspiration from. But I think the general population isn't really as in love with tiki as as they think. Mm-hmm. They, they like, they like the to walk at the tiki. end of the night, right? <laughs> and so it's it's finding yeah. that balance too when we write these menus because if there's twelve down here, twelve out east, plus four shots, we need to make sure you know there's four stereotypical kind of masculine spirit forward cocktails, four very kind of feminine cocktails, and then kind of four crowd pleasers. It, so it, there's enough for everybody that's coming in because we don't know who our guests are going to be. And so we need to have enough and also have the ability and knowledge to be able to make as much as we possibly can at that point. So if we just went tiki, we'll sell one drink, everybody's on the floor. Do you let your bartenders at each location build those? Do you build them? What's the cocktail process building like? So we've been, we've, we've played with the idea more recently of allowing them to be involved and it was fucking horrible. It was, <laughs> like, it was absolutely I'm, I'm glad you're honest. <laughs> it was horrible. Because I mean, we, we're putting bad. like turkey gravy into a drink it's like what are we doing right now you you know you Um, fucked up when it's like two days before the theme 
And my fat ass is behind the bar making cocktails like, Sean, I think this <laughs> might work. <laughs> right. So, but you're, that being so said, your team. That just, happened it's, once. That happened, okay. It happened so, once. I'm so, just going to caveat. You hire, you have some talented people in yes. your lar- larger company. We'll talk right. about that. I was The reason I'm so tired today is your bartenders won a competition last night that I was at until 1 a.m. at Luminate. So Tipperary happened to take home the, the little first year golden trophy. Yeah. Congratulations. But that's said, Viper, she's awesome. Vice Viper was yeah. killing it last night. So you have very talented uh, bartenders in your 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 company. So that one time they let you down, it sounds like. But I mean, this menu here, did, did Aaliyah build these drinks? Did Riley, did, did the they faces? Bi- no, we... they build the drinks after we give them the recipes. Yeah. Okay, they didn't uh, design I, the drinks. I um, did the entire menu. You so did this menu. This is, I know. She, this so she did Friends. So she did the entire Friends menu. She took mm-hmm. that on herself, which I thought was incredible because it allowed me to actually pull back and and take care of so many things with chef um, yes. just to get us caught up. Um, so from my perspective, it's bartenders are great, but bartenders currently right now make drinks that they think are either going to get their name out there or that they're going to want to drink. And the people that are guests, the people that are coming in and spending money when they can go to five other places, literally within a hundred feet of us, we need to make sure that we we're seeing the, the whole thing. A lot of people don't want a shot of mezcal. I enjoy that personally. I'm a bartender though. Fernet. Everybody loves Fernet if they're in the industry. Mm -hmm. But a lot of customers don't. And so it's having that empathy for what a paying customer is wanting to drink and what they're looking for. And you know, there's nothing wrong with a dirty martini. There really isn't. We've sold, we actually just pulled the number. So in the last 10 years, we've sold 184,000 dirty martinis. It doesn't mean it's a bad drink. It's not one I'm going to personally drink, but that being said, the people that are helping our income, they do drink those. Mm-hmm. And so we have we allow them to throw their ideas out there as they are continuing to grow and play with new ingredients. Okay. But we also have the final say. Okay. Uh, and it has to be profitable. Okay. And executable because we're high volume. Like I can't, we cannot throw a five minute cocktail back there. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, there was some drinks last night with this. By the time they wrote out the spec sheet, you're like, what the shit? You would never make that ever during service. It was brilliant last what night was in the competition. the competition we did where the fucking guy brought a log? Are you talking about right? Andrew's like, like forest floor? Like yeah, it, yeah. Was it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. No, it was, a, it was like, the, one yeah. of the most beautiful like, cocktails yeah. I've ever seen or in my entire ice. life. I don't do that on a Friday night. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, it's, it's a competition can. drink. It's a do it on a Tuesday, but do it twice. Did make like last Friday? We had counted how many he did by himself. Alone. No, it was Saturday. So it was Saturday, and so no, Riley Saturday. made yeah. Riley made four. It was four hundred eleven cocktails, cocktails and shots by himself in, a, by in himself. one night. In one in night. one night in six <laughs> hours. So in terms in terms of the like the glassware and the drinks, how often do you guys run into like bottlenecks where everyone wants the one that's in the couch? No. So the bottleneck is this: <laughs> fucking thieves. <laughs> Thieves. Oh. Thieves. No, so, seriously. Yeah, I was actually so, going to say something else. It was as soon as he writes a menu, uh, we're going to put IBC cream soda in that. No, IBC you cream sodas, yeah. you can't fucking <laughs> get it anymore. It's back like, ordered. Yeah. No, so this we, couch. We so actually we, ordered the entire planet's worth of uh, candied hibiscus flowers from the hibiscus company when we did Star Wars. I literally ordered every bottle they had available anywhere. Couldn't get them. After that. Absolutely so impossible. We bought, so it's mostly people stealing the glasses so that you're but, down to like. So we bought we yes. bought thirty six of those couches. Yeah. And we have eleven left. And you've been, been, open. been open for three weeks. Mm-hmm. What the shit? Almost people just three pocket weeks. this in their personal. Well, they we charge them if we catch them. We actually have that conversation a lot. Like, how the fuck do you walk out of here with one of these things? No, it's, it's a dirty glass. It's yeah. sticky and like, would you people put have this? No shame. You're like, like, no idea. We had a person fucking steal Darth Vader's head. Oh, we yeah. had a mannequin, a, mannequin. a full mannequin, Darth shit? Vader, <laughs> and she jumped up on a couch, ripped his head off, and tried to run out. <laughs> and mm. George Dillon actually chased her down into the parking lot. Is that the same party that took menus? Mm. No, her friend took the menus. Yeah, they had really cool menus for, I think it was Star Wars. Yeah. That you opened them, and oh, they, yeah, it was almost like up. a little illuminated tablet inside. It was super cool. Reading daily reports, like. Somebody ran down the fucking sidewalk with three menu books. Like, what the fuck? Does people have no shame? Mm-hmm. What the so fuck? So, Ashley, so we'll source things. We think, okay, we need 40 of these or 36 of these. And so, and sometimes they take, I mean, from Alibaba or wherever we're getting them from, they may take 
two months to come in. So yeah. it's not like we can just snap our fingers and have them Amazon primed. So to Ryan's question, day. you have 11 of these left. If all 11 people order this drink, what do you do? Move to the next thing? You're like, yeah, you're going to get it in a turkey now. It's fine, whatever. Um, or they can order a no, we No, we wouldn't put in another. We would just make a, a recommendation like, here's what's going on. Let's have this drink first because you're here for 90 minutes. So we anticipate you should be able to have three cocktails where you're here. So let's do that for number two while we're able to gather those and pre-bus, mm -hmm. clean those. But they're very aware every single night of their inventory. Because, again, to buy these, it's going to take two months. That's actually good. I didn't mention that earlier. So you you sell 90-minute slots. This isn't just a stay as long as you want drink all night mm -hmm. thing. Tell me about that then. How does that format work for anyone who hasn't been to one of these before? What should they expect in their drinking session? How does that work? Go as many as you possibly Sit can. Sit down. Go hard. Take a Go shot home. first. Depends on your Get night. Right. You make a reservation okay. for whatever, 7 o'clock, and you have till 8.30. 8.30, and at that point, you'll be politely reminded, like, oh, it's your time. Someone else is coming in. We need your 15 table. 15 minutes before we have to because, again, we have another reservation that's waiting for that. And it's the only time I've ever seen people show up early for shit because they will sit outside five minutes before the reservation angrily rocking back and forth, ready to come in. Yeah. And so we have to be very cognizant of the time. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a Tuesday night and you know it's nine o'clock and we don't have another reservation, stay as long as you would like. Okay. It's customer service. We want yeah. you to feel comfortable here. Yeah. But if there's somebody that needs that table, we do kind of have to move you along. And yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's become more of like a, not a theater show or performance, but in a way, like when you buy movie tickets, you show up for your movie time and then mm -hmm. you're in, you're out. Like, in a way, you're like They're a not movie, stop the movie because you relate. Yeah, this, yeah. This is live action role drinking. <laughs> nice. I like that. Actually. I'm yeah, using it well. <laughs> well said. From the man who just said that, let's talk about some food for a minute. You've been, uh, at least dating back to Lord of the Rings, I think you started to build specific food menus paired to the theme and have, well, I think, a limited bar menu in here and then full menu next door at Wobbly. Is that right? Yeah. So we have the entire Wobbly Olive menu is available back here, as well as um, I think Inez kind of coined it as like small bites menu, where we typically do between four and five um, menu items that are themed to, to match the theme and illusion. Okay. So as a chef, tell me about that. Like, uh, let's take Lord of the Rings, for example. Like, I've seen the movie a bunch of times. I know there's the Shire, there's Mordor, there's all kinds of cool shit you could draw from. What did you do, if you recall, for a couple plates that were like... You know, it's unfortunate that that's the one that you want to talk about. Well, tell me about this one right now. Tell me about friends. Okay, tell me about we friends. Didn't, we didn't so, actually so, do a theme menu for Lord of the Rings. No, oh, okay, I, okay. I, I think um, <laughs> back... We used to run specials that were themed, yeah. and we tr like I think with Archer we did like a Bob's Burger menu. Yeah, um, we did, we did. But more recently, we've been theming menus, or even Barbie or Friends. And tell me about something that how do you as a chef design for the theme? So Friends was actually really easy for me because when we decided to talk about doing Friends, um, I have you know three little girls and my son, and two of my daughters absolutely love this show, and it was actually one of my favorite shows when it was on air as well. So I was. Actually, out of the three of us sitting over here, I was the one that had the most friends knowledge. Hmm. Um, so going into this one, it was actually really easy. I mean, the moment we talked about doing friends, we had to do floor cheesecake. It's it's a very iconic scene in the in the show, um, and it just translated very well. So Sean and I got some actual tiles and cut them down and made plates, and and we're serving cheesecake on floor tiles, and it's <laughs> it's awesome. very reminiscent it's to the down. show. <laughs> okay. Um, Barbie, actually, this may shock you, so hold on to your seats. Um, I had never seen the fucking movie. Um, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> How'd that day go? So Sean and I showed up here, and we watched um, a the very, abridged very abridged Cliff Notes version <laughs> of the highlights. Yeah, he, he opened his iPad and was like, you need to see this part. And we'd watch you know, a 20-second clip, and I think it took us 12 30. minutes to write the menu. Um, and it actually was fairly successful. Um, the friends menu was a lot easier for me to write because um, I had I've literally seen every episode at least once, um, and this menu is being received very well. Um, a lot of inspiration to pull from you know the characters. It's it's not like doing a, a a beer dinner where you have to pair with you know this beer that has this nuance mm -hmm. and you know to taste like cat piss and hay like you're doing a, a <laughs> wine dinner. Yeah. Um, you know I was able to pull you know some excerpts from Joey's character and from Chandler's character and you know Monica was a chef in the show so there was actually quite a bit of um, inspiration to pull from for this one can you get away with like so maybe something's Mediterranean leaning or Indian or Italian or Spanish whatever it doesn't is it doesn't matter as much is it it's not about like, like to your point it's not about nerding out on a specific flavor and trying to hit this like oh we're gonna bring up fiddle notes in this for some reason it's just more 
maybe make it look more thematic. Yeah, like you, the you know, the cool example. thing is, and, and for the people that are going to watch this later, aren't going to get this full shot that you guys can, but as you look around, the, the space is fun. So like for Joey Tribbiani, one of the ma major characters in the show, he's very Italian, so we did like a flatbread pizza this time around. Um, we're able to have a lot of fun with it. There's no chastity bell that doesn't have to be like super authentic, which is great because that's a, you know, a nonstop battle in, in my world as far as being a chef goes. You know, everything, if I put a tikka masala on the menu, it has to be traditional or somebody's going to fucking complain about it. They I can have a lot more fun with about. this. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, there's a lot broader net that I can cast here. So it does, I mean, with a 90-minute reservation, you don't have as much time to hone in and get offended. Mm -hmm. And you did just release a new spring menu as we're recording this for Wobbly. You're about to release this new spring menu. Yes, so Wednesday that'll go live. Okay. Tell us real quick, too, about that. Um, anything you want to highlight from this upcoming menu? Or, again, we talked about, like, American Cocktail Bistro. You want to tell someone who's never been to a Wobbly at either location what to expect when they come in? Kind of a scatter shot. Can I jump in there really quick for yeah. just a moment before yeah, yeah. our talks? So one of the things that we noticed, <clears throat> especially as we were moving forward is, I mean, we were just at a restaurant last night and there was a, probably the thinnest steak I've ever had in my entire life. It's $55. And I mean, it's, it was three eighths of an inch thick. Chicken fried steak. Like no, it's Pounded flat. You no, know, it was why it was steakums. <laughs> steakums reformed. Yes. And so what we're noticing, especially with some of the uncertainty that we have in this industry and, you know, as consumers, because we're also consumers as well. So we enjoy dining out is it becomes very expensive where you start wanting to go to a place just when it's a holiday or an anniversary or birthday. And so I've really been pushing this over the last several years with everybody that we've worked with. Let's find a way to be responsible, but let's lower our prices Let's lower our costs. We can keep our profit margin where it is because, again, this is a business. We are business owners. And so I have from insurance to workers comp to the payroll, which I have to do, by the way. Today. Yes, I know. I have the payroll today. I'll um, <laughs> yes. Um, but between rent and rents are, are escalating. Yeah. Every so year. we have all of these things that we have to worry about, but we also have our staff to worry about as well. And they have to earn their wages and we care about where they're at. Why can't we lower? our costs and lower our prices and instead of somebody coming once a month or every other month, why can't they come twice a week? And so when we decided to, you know, put our heels in on our relationship and, and make it a little bit deeper, that was one of the challenges that I think we both came up with, which was let's find a way to lower our, our prices and still make the same amount of money, still make the same profit margin. But can we actually move forward and lower our prices? And it has been game busters. Since Mark has taken over the chefing at Wobbly Olive, we have doubled, if not two and a half times, our food sales. And we've been able to lower prices. How do you achieve it? I mean, people might say, well, he can talk about that. I'll just order volume. cheaper chicken or something not, like, not that. Even volume. Volume. like that. It's no, not no, about no. quality, it's about no, volume. So, it's so one of the things yeah. as as writing menus and you know, Sean and Inez were really helpful in this too because they really kind of understood the client base that we have on the East location. Downtown, I have a lot of history with, you know, I've been in this building for eight, nine years now. So we really had a good understanding of kind of who we're servicing. Um, but, but decreasing the price of things kind of takes out some of the highfalutin staunchiness of it all. You can open it up a little bit, have a little bit more fun with it and create an environment where we deliver excellent service because we do have such a great staff and then do very consistent food that is, you know, a little bit more mainstream. We keep our, our thumb on the heartbeat of the industry. You know, like we were just briefly talking about tiki drinks, you know, those flavors that people associate with tiki, pineapple, coconut, those tropical flavors are, they're, they're trending right now. And I hate to use that word, but keeping, keeping that kind of stuff in mind and then finding good product that is affordable you know there's certainly things that we would love to do i'd love to have duck comfy on the menu but i also can't afford 34 dollars a pound duck all the time so um one of the things that i'm finding success in right now like <clears throat> to, to answer your question briefly about you know a dish that's on this new menu that i'm excited about is we're doing a pork souvlaki tenderloin you know 10 15 years ago at the blue star pork tenderloin was was very mainstream but it was also kind of running the pork market um, so the price of pork chops and pork tenderloin was a lot higher than it is now. 
now everybody's doing some sort of fucking pork bacon belly. jam yeah, or, you know, belly. cured pork belly and, and pork bellies is driving the market. So switching back to a product that everybody is still familiar with and has a little bit of knowledge about whether they like it or not and is familiar enough for them to order it gives me the leeway to write a dish that's maybe a little bit outside of the box but uses some components that people are familiar with so I can get them to try it because it is, you know, as a chef, you always want to push cuisine, but you have a responsibility to not only train your staff, but also train your customers as to the kind of cuisine that you're going to do. So using those nostalgic items gives them you know, a foot in the door to try something that you want to play with. And as soon as you have them trained in three months, change up the theme on them. Yep. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck right. them. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fuck no, at, at some point, we will bring sweetbreads back. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay. I'm going to step away from illusion for a second and go to Wobbly's history. And then we'll come back to Mark, too, because I want to step in on what we mentioned, you know, Blue Star, some of the things. So we're going to hit that, too. But um, I wrote Wobbly's original review for the indie. I remember uh, you. came out to I eat. I remember that I was your server. And we I were... I actually read it last week. It's hanging <laughs> oh, wow. on the wall. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it, it holds its form. It's nice. And Bryce uh, so kept picking up I was up terrified. Every, yeah. Do you remember Bryce kept picking up every single piece of silverware? Like, I love yes, this piece. I, I, I had to go source where we got our silverware. I had to go ask Chef Dave to cook because yeah. he's the one that wanted us to get this silverware or whatever and I was like it's got the he nice was weight. the little stamp on it and <laughs> yeah. like oh man well, I was so terrified of you guys so like time. for me <laughs> in that review it was symbolic because everything going on in the city at the time was downtown and west side in terms mm-hmm. of fine dining you know there not to take away from Margarita Pine Creek and some like sure. classics and other areas, but let's just say East as a whole towards powers, there was really very little to no independent food uh, other than maybe a couple of international things. You might get a sushi restaurant or yeah. a Mediterranean, but you were the first to bring at the time closer to fine dining with David's original menu, pretty fine dining actually mm-hmm. um, to powers. And we, and I thought that was significant. We wrote about it. That was sort of the, the, the takeaway was like, Holy shit. Yeah. Finally powers has something cool. These people have invested in bringing this out there. And I think we talked at the time about, you know, you lived closer to there. You want something in your neighborhood. You, you didn't want to always have to drive downtown for it, but let me stop telling the story and give it back to you. Tell me about the, the founding of Wobbly. What did you want to do? Why did you do it? Well, so we used to go so... <laughs> He'll take it from the top. So, so next The to, why is great. One yeah. of the best stories ever. So that location used to be Nolan's. And when we would go to movies, we would go to Nolan's. It was a Cajun restaurant that we'd come in and get shots and have fun and go, and go to movies. And we went to a, another restaurant here in town and just had a miserable experience. And so while we're and as and I are driving home... I'm bitching about if I owned a restaurant, all the things I would do. And she goes, well, if you're so good, just open a restaurant. She would tell me to shut up. I took it as a challenge. I took it as permission to do this lightly. And so when I saw that Nolens had lost her liquor license, I called the landlord and I said, I would love to have the space. And they said, what's your concept? I was like, I have no idea. But we'll personally guarantee the whole thing. So kick him out, put us in. And this is uh, Cliff Notes. And when we opened, after they agreed with that, I came home and I threw the lease on the, the bed. And I was like, we own a restaurant now. She was not as happy as I thought she was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Even a little bit. And what were you Can I f- interject on why I wasn't happy? Because she'd been in the industry I'd been before. in the industry <laughs> since I was 14. I'd never My waited My mother a table. owned a restaurant. It actually burned down in like a record-breaking fire, which is kind of crazy because it was attached here? to a hotel. No, was- no, this is in Virginia Beach. But okay. um, I'd been raised in the industry I'd been doing it. I was in school. I wanted to do something else with my life. And I was planning on like, I'm going to be a scientist. Like had this whole plan. And uh, he just threw that lease on the bed. Like, Ooh, we're, we own a you restaurant now. And I was like, you are now a working owner. And he's like, no, I'm not. I always thought I was going to have like a table in the corner with <laughs> yeah. a velvet rope that said owner hanging from it. And so he could just go, Garcon, uh, Jack and Coke, please. Or something. I don't know. But, but going back to like the tiki side is... Something that I think we're very good at is we see the gaps in markets. And so when I'm sitting there in this now space I, I have, and I don't know what we're going to do with it. I'm looking at all of the different places that are around. So what markets are not being represented? And it was early bird dinners, which I didn't have any interest in that. Um, or it was actually women from 25 to 45 that wanted to come in because everything felt like a meat market or a sports bar. Yeah, beer. Yeah, it was, it was Lots all. Of beer. And we right. also know that women have better palates than men. And so 
again, no woman's ever walked in and said, what's your cheapest beer, bro? And so it was like, okay, we need to find something that makes sense for women. And this is how we can change this area. And that's what we did. And the idea behind it was, again, no idea. We came in as business owners first, not bartenders or chefs. And so we approached it from a very different perspective. And I think that's probably some of the success that we've had is how do we make sure we take care of all of these, the, the other things that people aren't prepared for? Now, you can make a great dish, but if it costs you 150% of what you're charging for it, so then you're going to close. Then it's not that great. You know I mean? it's not that great. <laughs> and, so, and because there are, there, are financial, there are financial responsibilities that we have from, again, all of the things that we can talk about. Linen. Fucking linen right now. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. fucking expensive. Yeah. The, yeah. the paper towels are so expensive right now. Consumables, that's what we call them. Well, yeah. and you, it's really strange, too, and we've been having this conversation off and on for probably the better part of two months now, but it's shit that you would never think of is either astronomically expensive or you just can't get. Like mushrooms have been a royal pain in the ass for 60 to 90 days. Something that you never even think about because they're always available until they aren't. Um, our tonic dry, water. Our dry ice cooler. Tonic, we, yeah. We've been out of it's tonic so water for 90 days. So we've been picking up tonic water from Safeway. Oh, yeah. Pepsi and Coke, neither of them have tonic water that were available. You wouldn't even think that. Like, that's not one of the things you even think about. Well, just last week I was placing the order, and I think it was every single herb that I tried to order out of stock. Wow. All right. So Wobbly, it does well enough to expand, and we're going to start getting towards when you partner up and where this all goes. But Wobbly does a, a west location, and we'll call it a city at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, we... What else? We added the, the, the collective at some point. Right. Walk so, us through what the growth of your umbrella business after that. Um, I think at that point is I never thought I was going to be a bartender. I thought I was going to be an owner. And then I fell in love with bartending because somebody called in and I came in and I was very actually arrogant about this. Somebody called in for a, a lunch shift and I said, if you fuckers can do it, I can do it. <laughs> And so I walked in and fucked up every, every drink. Like I so for anybody that's listening to this that doesn't know Sean, the story of him being arrogant about something, it, it's, it's not foreign. <laughs> right, okay. If you want to see him do something, challenge him and tell him he can't. Yeah, yeah no shit. Yeah. Oh, well, but give so him two fucking weeks and he'll why figure he it out. A bartender, and so I walked said, in and I screwed every drink up. But the customer then, at that point, thanked me. And we laughed and they paid me. And I was like, that was cool. And so now all of a sudden, now I'm addicted to this. I'm like, I'm going to be the best I possibly can. And so I deep dove so hard into just customer service and bartending and using resources and not being scared to cold call. Sean Kenyon. Sean Kenyon, some of the best yeah. people in this industry. And I became a nuisance to learn as much as I possibly could. And I fell in love with it. And I realized that some people have a calling and this was my calling. This really was my calling is customer service. And yeah. I love it so much. And so at that point, I stopped going to actual work because I wanted a bartend now. And so I stopped. I literally was calling in to my own. You had a day job still. He had, had a day, had a day job. job. And, and so I'm calling in. in so I could go and bartend. <laughs> you were, remind me, you came out of like uh, oil and oil gas. It was oil and gas, yeah. yeah. I own the company. I'm calling in to myself so I don't have to go to work. And I just let <laughs> that whole thing die in the vine so I could go bartend nice. and make two dirty martinis of you know, every lunch and it was fantastic. And I, I just, I understood that was part of my calling at that point. However, we've closed more businesses than we own. And so from 2016, we had an opportunity to open the collective, which was out, um, <clears throat> Banning Lewis ranch area. Yeah. Barnes, yeah. Marsh yeah. shuffle ish. Yeah. And we thought it was going to be a blast and it was a blast, but it also, what we did was, so in that 2016, 2017, we opened the collective, we opened Sakura, we opened mm -hmm. Wobbly West. Yeah, those things. And Old Colorado concepts. City. And you had Happy Belly going at that time too? Or not at that point. No, so you were not just opening quite. Yeah. Roosters. So Roosters opened in 2017, and I think Happy Belly Original on Spruce opened in 19. 19. Okay. Right. So, and, and there was originally, uh, and Happy Belly briefly went out to go over the collective, mm -hmm. but then that and all then closed. I know this sounds convoluted if you're just joining yeah. us on this part, but. but a lot of places. Yeah. So, when we decided to sign the lease for the old Colorado City, it was in June, right after Territory Days. Old Colorado City's just bustling, and we're like, yeah, this would be stupid not to do. We weren't 
we weren't aware enough of the actual culture there and what happens. And that's, you know, when tourism is dead, the whole place dies. That's 2018, mm-hmm. I think, right? That 20, was 20, no, 2017. 2017. Okay. And so we, at that point, we were not we, I would say me. I was. I was high on the hog thinking, look, if I could do it on powers, I could do it anywhere. And I was overly confident coming into some of these areas without really understanding the culture that's down there, the people that are down there, the customers that could mm-hmm. possibly be there. And so the we neighborhood demands. So we opened a bunch of places very quickly. COVID closed that one though, right? You were still open. So I think you would set up the hand washing stations in that dining room during COVID. So if I, if I that was at East. That was East. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So so Wobbly West is we just started just seeing and, and really what it came down to is we were still making money, but our staff wasn't. So we were still being able to, we were treading water, we're staying afloat, but it was very hard for people to still come in and yeah. really want to do a great job. So it was like, okay, what's going on? And that's where we were already partners, Mark Henry and the three of us, the total. And there's like, maybe we need to shake something up. And we were open for 12 days? 12 fucking <laughs> 12 days. days. 12 days. 12 so we were, fucking so days. we transitioned Wobbly West to Happy Belly Tacos, yeah. 12 days open, and then we were shut down. From the it pandemic. sucked. Yeah. Yeah. From the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so we got our initial order, mm-hmm. and then we threw it all away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. and, and again, I think people are tired of hearing about COVID, but as business owners, it was one of those really challenging moments where we didn't know what was going to happen next. And so we were being told something new every single week. And what we've really done at this point um, was kind of you know, pulled back everything that we're trying to do and do the things that we're doing currently much better. Mm-hmm. Instead of looking to expand and move forward and open new things, it's let's do the things that we already have in our hand and give that the care and love that we need to. Because we did have the Happy Bellies, the collective, mm-hmm. all of those different ideas, and they're great ideas, but we're satisfied enough with the creativity from Illusion to be able to continue to get that out, to purge our creativity. Okay, That's a big help. <clears throat> and then Mark, on your end, uh, do you want to take us through, uh, let's just say, after military, after culinary school, what's your quick chef resume that leads you to this place? And then speaking on what Sean just, or, uh, just said, as it pertains to sort of like closing the things to focus now on what's being successful, you just want to give us a quick Yeah, so after, after culinary school, um, I spent some time actually at Victor's Place up in Green Mountain Falls, the Black Bear. Um, left there and took a position at um, the Hilton down by the airport and then um, ended up at the flying horse with kettle and then took a position with blue star and was there in that company for quite a while Um, opened ivy wild helped out at nosh and then got real burnout on the industry so i went to uh, ranch foods direct and was out at the ranch in kansas and and at the shop when they were still on el paso um, and then ended up wanting to get back in the kitchen and me and brother hung our hats together for a little while. Um, I had a really bad life threatening, uh, vehicle accident and decided if I was going to come back to work, I was going to do it for myself. So opened roosters and ran that for a while until cost just got out of control as we were, you know, nearing, I guess the middle of the pandemic, it just became too much. Um, so shut that down and tried to do something that I thought was going to be a little bit more cost effective. Um, Kelly's, um, probably my most epic failure to date and, um, threw in a couple happy belly tacos in the middle of that too. When roosters was really doing well, it helped fund that. Um, we had some fun with that, but ultimately it ended up not working out just based on timelines with the the pandemic. And then, uh, instead of just throwing, the white flag in the air and surrendering we decided to deepen our partnership and focus on wobbly and and bolstering illusion um to carry us through and and having a blast now cool so it sounds like when they talk about like failing forward or whatever it sounds like you've learned from the lessons you learned from the themes that didn't work the businesses that didn't take some things were out of your control like the pandemic coming along but how do you feel today though you feel like this is dialed in you've got two locations of wobblies with illusions in them this is a tight portfolio yeah, illusion. illusion. Yeah. Plural. I was about yeah. to oh, come on, man. Illusion is plural, not two. <laughs> yeah, with an I, no, right? It's the singular, illusion. Not plural. But I meant illusion times two illusions. Oh, the two illusions. Oh, okay. right. not the two illusions. illusion locations. Right. Illusion I. 
Illusion times yeah. two. Two wobblies with an illusion in each, if you will. So now we're back to uh, two wobbly locations, each with an illusion inside mm -hmm. after all the learning lessons of these past uh, successes and failures. So where are we today? How are you feeling about things? The answer to that, and I was thinking about that while she was peeing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to blame her for all that. Um, you know, I feel good about this. And I think, you know, we brought up the, the pandemic several times. And because it was, I think, in our young careers in the food service industry, nobody was prepared for that. And so for us, it's one of those moments where it's like, wow, do you remember almost not to correlate this too much, but like 9-11, everybody knows where they were during 9-11. Mm -hmm. So there were so many conversations that were happening, like, we're not going to get shut down. We're not going to do this. Nobody was really prepared. So it was that moment of how are we going to respond versus react to this? And so there have been some lasting effects, I think, that we've learned from. And I think what's where I'm at right now is we've had some concepts fail. We've had themes that have failed. We've had dishes that were just dog shit. I've made a drink where I'm like, this is going to crush. No. <laughs> Your corn Every drink? Dog. It that, was good. That fucking thing was it so was amazing. It was delicious. <laughs> However, it was not well received. But I was juicing sweet corn. It was fucking amazing. Was it, it like was a good. Peruvian drink or no, something? No, it was, it was, it was uh, gin. Coconut so milk. Was, no, it had, didn't have coconut milk. So it was gin, sweet corn, juice, sweet corn, a green chili liqueur. Um, it was mm. it was so much fun. It was it probably killed today. I don't. But five <laughs> years ago, it didn't. And so I think what we've learned is we've learned to roll with the punches. When we first opened the Wally Olive, every single Yelp review, we're rewriting a fucking menu. So it was like mm. I didn't like the calamari. Back to the drawing board, boys. Yeah. And so I think what we've learned is that we have the backbone and the shoulders now at this point to to move forward in this small community that I think we've all called home and support each other and move forward and more importantly, ask for help. I think that's the biggest thing that we've learned from with all of, you know, all of the, the challenges that we've had is from Franco to, you know, to brother, to Rebecca, every single person, Joey and Capata, he's a douche. Um, but that being said, every <laughs> single, second that. <laughs> but every single person Love in this you. community that owns a small business, they want to help. And, I think sometimes we, we become so prideful that we stopped asking. And so I think that's what I've learned is that we can ask for help if we, if we need something, um, if we need advice, if we just need direction on something. Where do you get this? Oh, how about this? I'm having a hard time with this. And so I think as a community, we've become now part of it. And not having, at least for myself, not having experience in this industry, I feel now a part of the hospitality community where I feel like comfortable now and less prideful that I can ask for help from everybody else that we're around. Well, that, only, that only took 10 years. It did. Take, well, <laughs> but again, but, right? and, but again being, being very stubborn at this point. And so that's why, I mean, everything you're doing right now, I think, makes so much sense because you've brought all these local business owners together. I know now I can ask for help from somebody. And mm -hmm. they're going to get, I don't have to take their advice, but I'm going to get advice. And we are in this together. Eric Brenner has been incredible to me and yeah. he's been so friendly and so helpful. Yeah. I Sean's mean, talking about the side dish dozen, by the way, they're members. So big thanks to you guys for supporting what I'm doing and being part of our collaborative. But yeah, this is, we're only three months into this and we're already seeing really cool things happen inside of our small group. Uh, to your point though. Yeah. I mean, when the community steps up, especially this alliance of small businesses, whether that's just in the downtown corridor where there's the downtown partnership that represents that or wider, cause you've got your East location, your neighbors out there. But um, even when the chains start participating, you know, during the pandemic, we saw tons of chains acting like locals, yes. same thing. Cause they, they are locals. They yeah. are, I mean, All of their franchises, employees. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like I too soften in my old, like uh, Indies versus chains approach. I'm like, Hey, we're all, we're all here. Mm -hmm. And most of us have that same common mission of wanting to see the scene get better, bring us all up and help each other along to get there. Uh, so uh, anyway, so I feel great. very hopeful. So if something else happens, we have some problem. I know that we can get through it together. Yeah. What about you, Inez, Mark, anything else that uh, as we're wrapping up here, you feel like we wanted to say that we didn't cover, whether it's about illusion, wobbly, um, past businesses, anything at all. We always like to end with the opportunity for you to bring something up that we didn't think to ask. I don't know. I'm, I'm Hope, shy. Hopes and dreams. Like, what, like if <laughs> let, let me let me pose this question. This is just a quick one. Uh, in five years, do you see yourself still uh, 
doing the same thing, or yes. do you see, uh, you know, in the last five years, as you guys have, have sort of alluded to, there's been a lot of changes. Um, well, so I, I think you're still yeah. you're continuing to see change. You know, um, this is going to be like a, a guiltless plug because I we talked about it before we started today, but I'm super pumped at, at having a legal pizza here now. I think you're starting to see with like the um, Dos Santos and Atomic Cowboy, and and we're getting not necessarily like big corporate chains, but kind of some of these independent smaller chains are starting to come down here, which is is kind of proof in the pudding that the industry in this town is evolving and mm -hmm. it's awesome to get to be a part of that but the the other side of that coin is also you know like illegal pizza in my opinion does a really fucking good job um i've been a long time a supporter of them up in denver and and to have them have the faith in our industry down here they're going to come down and do what they do but also press the rest of us around uh, around here to step our game up too which is going to you know, keep fueling the fires for us. You know, the, the answer to your question in five years, do we plan to be doing the same thing? Um, yes and no. I, I plan to still be in the industry in five years from now, but I hope to be a hell of a lot better at it than I right. am now. Yeah. And I, I think better, kind better. of those pushes from, from some of these other businesses that are coming down and, you know, the operators that are a part of them is going to enrich our community within this industry, which is awesome to see because some of us are starting to get old. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be banging the line in five years. I'll be too, way too fucking broken for that. Yeah, and, and you brought up illegal Pete's. You know, they're they're very similar, like what we have in the the beer industry here in town. Uh, they you know they put up a sign that they're opening. They put their sign on the on the building three years, three or four years ago. Two, two plus. Two, two, two plus. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like yeah. it's been it's been a long. So time. I was actually talking. Um, a lot of delays. I've, I've eaten there but a they, few but times they already. Stuck with it. And I was Absolutely. talking to their chief operating officer on Friday night. And I said, man, I'm, I'm really glad you guys are open now. I've been waiting for you. And he goes, yeah, we really fucking like paying rent for no goddamn reason. <laughs> like, fair well, enough. Maybe, so a great example of that actually is out east because we're one of the few independents that are out there. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember we opened in May and then the sign for Bar Louie popped up mm -hmm. in July with a motherfucking, sorry, sorry, like right across. Can we say that? Yeah, motherfucking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with a motherfucking martini sign that's mm -hmm. literally the same as ours. Yeah. And I'm like. We're not going to make it. And we did. We kind of freaked out a little bit internally. We're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and so we went and actually enjoyed their food, and they did a great job for what they were. And they were too big, though. They were the, the space was too big, that, but that was their. Downfall. But what was funny about that is that we saw, okay, this is where we need to to be better. Right. And so instead of like cowering from that, we embrace that. I'm really excited about Saponza's project at Frontline that's now taking oh, the Bar yeah. Louis spot across the, the found from us. Yes. Like the more the merrier. Let's like all ships rise at the same time. I want people to come in and enjoy both. We want to promote them. Yeah, and so we're waiting for We want for that shopping center to have younger crowds cuz I feel like it's a lot of families right now. Um, because of the neighborhood we're in. Fuck those but families. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I want another there. cool place for people to go. Like, it can't just be, you know, corporate cool, and us. How and cool can you be when you're located across from a place called Dress Barn? I hate that. Who wants you, to shop at a... Be, what woman wants I mean, to go to a place with barn in the title when she's shopping? It, 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 it is a very unfathering title, it in is. my opinion, and I've always thought that, which is why I've I shop actually at big never R. shopped there. However... <laughs> <laughs> However, you know, this you, Norwood, I got, I got to credit them. They, they bring in companies that are going to pay their rent. They bring in reliable companies for the most part. And that's going to bring more people in consistently. But yeah. also they like, might go to, they might not go to Wobbly for the first five times they come to the shopping yeah. center, but they're going to see it every time they're going, you know, you know what? And then so with like Frontline. I like 70% of the city does, still doesn't even know about Wobbly all of yet. Which is funny because with Frontline coming in, from my perspective, it's a way for us to support each other mm -hmm. at that point. Because I know for a fact we will always make better cocktails than they ever will. We don't <laughs> offer coffee. <laughs> But they're going to bring a foodie uh, type clientele to Sapanza's that Because is an yeah. incredible chef. She is a great she, chef. We worked together before. Yes. She helped us open Wobbly West. Mm -hmm. She's an incredible chef and Her a kind person. So that being said, with her being there, and now it's just going to elevate that whole little center. Yep. Let's celebrate this. Yeah, when you're, when you're full, they're going to go there. And when they're full, they're going to go to you. Exactly. That's the way it works. Yes. I mean, that's how it was with Bar Louie. We actually had like a little friendly competition of bring your receipt from Bar Louie over to us and we'll make you a better cocktail and charge you a dollar less. It was, okay, it was, that was, it was more a really a great marketing campaign. <laughs> so. and no, we're going to do it again. And they, no, but I think they, we should. They stole I think, our sign, I think a funny. lot of our guests <laughs> should go over to Frontline. So we're actually trying to make banners right now, which is. Come there and go to Frontline. Go support them mm -hmm. first. 
And so I think that's where we're at is that as an industry as a whole, we need to support each other and we need to continue being ready for whatever's going to happen in the future. COVID-20. And, yeah. <laughs> no, right? no, shut no. your mouth, Ryan. Yeah. Right. But that also being said, if, if you guys need something, if anybody's listening to this and you guys need help, we're here to help. We're here to support. Yeah. We are That's a community. Awesome. You should probably touch on basically, I, I don't really know what the concept is going to be over there, frontline, but like. They're going to do their own thing. They can mm -hmm. announce their own bullshit because I don't okay. even know what it is. Yeah. Oh, I um, thought, I'm not familiar. Well, I'll, find out. That'll do that. I'll put it in the newsletter soon. They're doing cocktails. Sponsors, my all yeah. coffee. Yeah. I know it's 24 hours. Oh, cool. Is it? That's neat. That's Either way, I'm excited because it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, really enjoyed this episode. Really enjoyed sitting in this faux kitchen here mm -hmm. uh, inside of Illusion Singular, not Illusions Plural. Everyone get that right. The two Illusion locations. Use yes. your Illusions. That could be plural in that context. Yeah. Um, now, remember, <laughs> we'll make reservations because this yes. sells out. It fills up. You've already announced the next theme, which is already full for the first month. You so, say? yeah. So Mario yeah. Brothers is the, first, is the next theme. And then where we're at right now is we didn't... We have messed up. We're always doing theme change right at New Year's. And so what we're actually doing is we found a small filler theme that hasn't been announced yet. So we'll uh, do this now for you. Okay. So oh, yeah. from September and October, we're going to do Beetlejuice. Cool. The new Beetlejuice 2 is coming out September 6th. And so we're going to do Beetlejuice for 60 days. And nice. then it's going to be Harry Potter November, December, and then January to then give us that month away from the holidays. Mm -hmm. Just cool. for our own, our all of our kids. Yeah, it, we have ten December kids between each other. December is very <laughs> difficult on our family, so because we're usually doing four theme changes in two months. But just remember what Mark said: "Fuck families, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck those families." No, but that being said, we have ten fuck kids. Things. I think between each other, eight kids between mm -hmm. each other. So that being said, we're going to push that. So we did find a really cool just Beetlejuice theme for it those. It fits months. that time of year as well. Yeah, and so the new movies coming. We're going to make it Halloweenish, and you know. It's, it's where you can pull some of those, Timber some of the maybe things vibes. that hit on the, the haunted house <laughs> things that, that were like, okay, this was cool, but we, we didn't have enough. Very directed. Yeah. All right. And remember, people, to get to Illusion, you have to walk through Obli Olive. You may as well stop and eat and try Mark's new spring menu. Please. We plan to go there mm -hmm. first or in addition to. Uh, the downtown location is now open in what used to be Roosters not too long ago. People remember that spot. Mm -hmm. um, and Kelly's. Yeah. We're right next to Josh and John's. Uh, come in here to check out this spot. Uh, we want to remind people that it's here and that you have the same menu in both locations. Correct. Yeah. Um, so if you have not done Wobbly, <laughs> do that as well. And then, of course, take care of your bartenders while they're here. Don't kick them. Don't bring your swords in and threaten them. <laughs> stick Especially, lighters. Yeah, stick Wrong lighters. Yeah. Keep allowed. them away. Um, and then keep an eye on social media for the upcoming theme announcements, some of which we just talked about. Uh, but that is it. Thanks for... Are you, You're doing an event here. Uh, that's almost it. Then, yes, 16th. we are going to be here on the uh, third Thursday of May. I believe it's the 18th, is it? Ooh. Don't eat. 18th. <laughs> 16th. Yes. Sean's right. I'm I like, nailed it. Thank First God. May 16th, we will be here. Uh, we're going to have a couple of cool special announcements. We'll announce mm -hmm. then, but join us at the Downtown Wobbly for our Sip Wish Nip third Thursday spectacular something something. We'll come up with a better title by then. Um, <laughs> but Mark will come up with some special menus for us for the night, and we will have a nice little party. So we would love to see you there, too. This is like every phone call we have. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, and we're mm -hmm. an hour and a half. An hour or two. Really yeah. Shit. You, you guys <laughs> are like two gossiping as an Gross. outro, let's watch Sean drink from the nipple glass one more time. Yes. Ryan will slow it down to slow motion for us and zoom in. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>